So when we talk about editing styles in Pro Tools with respect to workflow, one of the core philosophies that I was taught, it's gonna be two decades now, is a tab to transient style editing workflow, meaning that we're tabbing to different transients and then maybe we wanna split this and move things over to do some kind of manual editing in terms of timing, or maybe you wanna change the gain or whatever the case is. But the concepts um, are the same two decades ago as it is now. We can use shift tab to go to the next transient if we wanted to make selections, or we could use shift tab, and then if we wanted to extend backwards, we could use option shift tab to extend to the previous uh, transient, but those concepts really haven't changed. Now, I'll be honest with you. If you talk to somebody who's a Pro Tools power user versus maybe somebody who's been in Logic since the beginning of Logic, you might find that people have very different editing styles. They could both be very fast, but this is very much kind of like something that is centered around Pro Tools users, I find, because I've seen many other people use different DAWs that don't edit this way. That's okay, we can edit whatever way you want, but what I wanna talk about is how this is similar in Studio One. Now, before we hop over to Studio One though, let's talk about two things in particular. First of all, if I make a range selection in Pro Tools and our looping is off and I press play, that is just going to play the selection and then it's gonna stop. And if I had a whole entire event selected, or rather a whole entire clip selected, it would play this whole clip and then it would, uh, it would stop. Now, if I have the loop enabled, so we'll use the four shortcut and the numeric keypad, Okay, you get the picture, and then I could move over to this next area. Okay, so if we take all of these actions into account, let's talk about how we can get Studio One to behave similarly. Well, it's worth noting that by default, like right out of the gate, it does kind of behave similarly, but you also have to program a couple additional key commands that I don't believe that these are programmed by default. So first of all, let's talk about the obvious one. I'm gonna take my snapping off, by the way. If I make a selection over here and I was to press play and I have looping off, take a listen to what happens. Let's solo this out. So it just keeps playing, okay? That's something that right off the bat is different to Pro Tools. Now, I wanna point out that there is a keyboard shortcut that allows you to play, but to just play the selected range. So if you're used to that Pro Tools style where you want to basically make a selection and only play that selection, this has its uses. And the way that we find this is you go to your keyboard shortcuts and you wanna search for play selected range, choose something that makes sense to you. I've used option or alt spacebar. I don't recall if this is something that interfered with the OS and I had to deactivate it or whether it was free, but this is what I've chosen to use because it's very close to the space bar and it's just my pinky moving over a little bit. Now I use both of these, to be honest with you. I use both of them all the time um, and it really depends on what task I'm going to do, but this one is extremely useful when you're trying to isolate something like a sibilant or maybe a harsh consonant. You want it to just zoom in and say, okay, I just want to play this, that's it. And then you can listen to that and see what you need to do with that. So that's the first thing I wanna point out. The second thing I wanna point out is with respect to the loop, um, the loop we can activate and deactivate, same way you can in Pro Tools, but the loop by default is unlinked or untethered to event selections and range selections. So what does this mean? Well, it means that this kind of behaves in a way where I love it for checking to see if something is looping properly because I could have a range selection made or something like this and then I could play from here and it'll just constantly loop. It has its benefits to being unlinked. That being said, if you would have asked me if I wanted a preference when I first made the move from Pro Tools to Studio One that would allow me to make Studio One behave like Pro Tools, I would have said yes. And that preference is right-clicking, loop, follow, selection. When we do this style workflow, where we have this preference enabled, no matter where I select, my loop brace will exactly follow that. And this will be regardless of whether snapping is on or off, or if I select the whole entire event, this may be something that uh, interests you, then this is something that you can activate if you want. And this will follow, again, based on whether an event is selected or a range selection is made, uh, or even you could have contiguous range selections that are made and it will extend across both of them. So 
That preference is found by right-clicking here. So now that we know how to make Studio One behave in terms of its playback and its loop brace, like Pro Tools, let's talk about now the Tab to Transient style editing. Okay, well, Tab to Transient is gonna work exactly like Pro Tools. The Tab key is going to tab to the next transient, but they're not called transients in Studio One, they're called something different. They are called hotspots. So if we type in hotspot, you can see these are all the key commands that we have available. Now we're gonna take a look at setting up a couple additional key commands to work the way the Pro Tools does. So first of all, we have next hotspot, okay? This is just a tab key. The next one I wanna take a look at is shift tab. So let's tab to the beginning of this transient and let's shift tab and let's take a look at what's happening. That's behaving exactly like we would expect. So for this one, I'm not sure if this is an error, maybe it was written down wrong or if it's something that I should report, but you want to search for focus previous and you can map this out, you can enter the key, just enter shift tab and you'll be able to assign that. Like I said, this is probably something I should check with the developers about, but when you click shift tab, which is referred to as focus previous, even though in my mind it should be focus next, this will allow you to tab over and shift tab to the next transient. So this is what we're kind of familiar with. To be honest with you, this might be something that was in the default keyboard mapping scheme in Studio One and it always works so I never changed it. I can't recall right now. The next one I wanna take a look at though is let's tab over, let's go shift tab. The next one I wanna take a look at is in Pro Tools, like we know, we can make a rain, we can make a tab to the transient, we can shift tab to the next transient. And then if I wanted to include these ones, I can alt or option shift to extend the selection to the beginning of the previous transient. We can do the same thing in Studio One. So let's go shift, or let, rather tab. Let's shift tab over to the beginning of this one. And then let's say we wanted to include these. Option or alt shift tab once, and then we'll go twice again. We'll go to the beginning of this one. Maybe we'll go to the beginning of this one. This is called size range start to hotspot back. Again, we're gonna go enter the key. I would just advise using the same one as Pro Tools. I don't think it's taken by the stock Studio One key commands. So option, shift, tab, we'll enter that, assign, apply, okay. So now what we have is we have something very similar to Pro Tools. We have tab, we have shift tab, and then we can tab over to this one. And then if I wanted to move over to this one, or let's say the beginning of this, option or alt shift tab over here. And then now we've tabbed over to the beginning. Now there's also one more key command that allows us to basically size the range selection back to previous key commands. I don't use that that often, but I think I have it mapped out to shift command delete. Okay, so there it is there. And let's see what that is called in case you want to map that out. That is called size range end to hotspot back. I'm just noticing something over here. Size range end to hotspot. I'm gonna have a look at that after I shoot this video. Um, so we have the basic behaviors that we have in Pro Tools now. We have tab, we have our shift tab, okay? Um, let's start from here, tab, shift tab over. We'll tab over to maybe this one over here. And then we can tab, shift tab back to maybe the beginning of this one, or sorry, alter option, shift tab back to the beginning of this one. Okay, now from here, what you would do in Pro Tools where you would break it in Studio One, that is alter option X, we'll cut this. And then of course, if you wanted to do something very specific, like I wanted to say like tab and then shift tab over, maybe I wanted to break this and lower the event gain, if you wanted to do editing like that. Um, another thing that we could do is if I had my clip gain active, which is something I usually do, uh, this is very much how I like to use this, tab, shift tab, over, and then I might clip gain this, and then we'll go to our range end, and then we'll go tab, maybe these ones are too loud, and I wanted to, or maybe they're not loud enough, and I wanted to move these up, this is very much just exactly like it would be in Pro Tools. I can move these up bit by bit. Um, and then anytime we add a node with our clip gain, we can bring things up and down. So in terms of your editing styles, the Shift tab and Alter Option tab to move back, this is something that we can adjust and we can use these editing techniques exactly like we can in Pro Tools. Now, undoubtedly, you will run into a scenario um, where the default transient detection of Studio One maybe either misses some 
or has too many. There are ways that we can refine this if the tab and shift tab is not working out for you. So this really comes into play when you have something, for example, uh, let's take a look at these drums where basically you have these like really low detail transient information. Maybe let's play from bar 13. Okay, let's take a look to see how this does right out of the gate. We're going to go tab. This will tab to that transient. And then what do we have here? We're going to use play selected range. Okay, let's go to the end here and let's go shift tab. Okay, so this is what this calculated. So in my mind, these are two separate things. We have this one and then we have this one, right? If we zoom in here and we take a look at these, there is this and then there is this one over here. So if you ever run into a situation where the transient detection is not working the way you want, and it's really imperative for your editing that it does, in this case, you can open up the audio bend menu uh, and you can do a transient detection. So you can choose either standard or sensitive mode. We can then analyze this and it will analyze the transient detection points. So you can see in this case, this had two. You can adjust this slider to see what shows up. Now, if you're not getting, still you're not getting the detail because we have this low level information. Let's pull this down. Let's go to a sensitive mode. Let's analyze this and then let's pull this threshold slider up and it looks like we're getting more of these transient detection points. Now we're also getting a couple that I don't necessarily need. So maybe I would just back that off till it kind of just gives me what I'm looking for. Now, after this is done, we don't have to have the bend menu open anymore. Now, the transient detection that happens when you're using tab and shift tab, this will be based on these bend markers that we've created. Now, in some cases, there might be too many. We could click the bend tool and we can select these. This is how we select and add these. And it's also, done a pretty good job in terms of determining where these are. So maybe I want to select this one and delete it. Uh, but like I said, this would really only happens this one, it maybe it missed a couple. So we could say I want one there, I want one there, and I want one there. And then when we're done, of course, we can show hide the bend markers to get rid of that view. And then we can switch back to our main tool. Also, the bend markers are available right over here, if we want to just make them active. So if ever things are not playing nice and you're not getting the transient detection points that you want. There is a way that you can go in this and you can kind of refine these transient detection points. And then once you have refined them, then again, it works the exact same way as we're expecting. Shift tab to select the next, the next transient point and then uh, alter option shift tab to go backwards. And then even if I've overextended this, we know that our command, sorry, our shift command delete is going backwards. And just so you know which one that is, that is called size range end to hotspot. So the answer is we can have the exact same style of editing in Studio One that we do in Pro Tools if that is something that you're interested in uh, using our tab to transient style workflows and then either splitting things or using event gain or rather the clip gain line. This, maybe I'll go back to this one. Maybe I'll go back here and I can pull these down a little bit. This is going to work for you. Now I am going to look into that one key command, which seemed like it had the opposite name, which is focus previous, where in my mind it should be focus next. But other than that, I think you'll be pretty happy with the way the transient detection works. And like I said, if you're not, we know that we have the ability to open this bend marker menu. Analyze this, adjust the detection mode and adjust the threshold. And then once you see all the bend markers that you want, in terms of uh, just giving this a quick transient detection point look through, and that looks good, then if you want to continue to work in a tab to transient style workflow in terms of your editing, that's something that you can do. That's it for this video. I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.